You can plan ahead and you can say, you know, there might be some situations down the road of uh, problems we might deal with. But let's face it, you never know exactly what's going to happen in your appraisal office. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds, it's the Appraiser Coach Podcast. Minisode. 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 Hey everybody, welcome to another mini So Dustin Harris hanging out with you, sponsored today, of course, by A Now Software. I was actually on a screen share uh, earlier today with a good friend of mine over at A Now and uh, showing me some of the cool features that are coming up uh, with A Now. No, I can't reveal them yet, but uh, super, super cool uh, program. Uh, if you're not already a an A Now user, you need to be, uh, folks. Uh, tell you this is the future of appraising a now.com slash coach is where you need to go again. It's a now.com slash coach. All right, folks, I want to talk today about this word triage. Uh, I want to set this up in, in such a way that, uh, you know, we recently found ourselves in a very challenging situation with regard to our appraisal office. Uh, I'm not going to get into all the details, but let's just say I had to let a key employee go. It was not an opportune time to do that. And uh, it put us in a in a bit of a pickle, and I and I knew that when I made the decision, it was uh, something that I felt was unavoidable, uh, always painful, but unavoidable in this case. And uh, I'll tell you, it, it made me sit back and realize, you know, th- this idea of triage at the office. We sometimes find ourselves in these situations where we kind of uh, just need to survive. And uh, I wanted to share with you a few things that we did uh, that I think could be applied to any business. But specifically today, we're going to be talking about the appraisal business and when we find ourselves in an emergency situation. Uh, First of all, let's talk a little bit about the word triage. What does that mean? Uh, Well, if you look up the dictionary definition of triage, triage is basically it's assessing needs in an emergency situation so that the patients that are most critical get attention first. And, you know, it's it seems inhumane on one sense, but really it is very humane in another sense, in the sense that, uh, you know, you hate to say, hey, you're more important than the, than the next person, right? In a way, you're not saying that. You're saying, you know, your wound, your situation is more urgent, more critical, more uh, time sensitive than someone else's. But that's really what triage is all about. If you remember, the movie that comes to mind uh, for me is Pearl Harbor. Uh, when uh, uh, I don't remember the actors and actresses' names, I, I don't remember those kind of things. But but the the female actress, um, you know, she is a nurse, and you know they're they're in the process of dealing with this uh, mass bombing and attack on Pearl Harbor, and she pulls out her lipstick and starts to mark uh, people uh, on their forehead based on their situation, how critical are they? Uh, and, and you start to sort people and start to say, Hey, you know what, you guys over here, you guys over there. And, you know, unfortunately some of those are a lost cause. And so you move on to others that you feel like that you can save. Um, but that, you know, imagine if you will, or if you've ever watched the show mash, you know, and they come over the loudspeaker incoming, incoming, right. Uh, we've got patients uh, that, that need uh, taken care of and, and, you know, every situation there at, uh, at the MASH uh, post there in uh, South Korea uh, is a kind of a triage situation, right? What happens when those types of emergency situations come to roost in your appraisal office? How do you handle things? I want to break down today uh, some very essential ideas that need to be remembered in those types of situations where you find that clients need to be served, volume still flows, you don't want to shut down your business. And this, by the way, can happen for a variety of different reasons. Maybe it's something like I set up for you originally in this podcast, and you have to let a key employee know a uh, go. Remember the old saying that one is none and two is one, right? You want to have people cross-trained. But even then, I've got people cross-trained, but even then I found myself in a very challenging situation. We had volume coming through the door. It needed to be kept. You know, I certainly don't want to pass on to my clients and my customers that, hey, we're in an emergency situation. Slow down the volume, right? I don't want to do that. I want to keep up with things. 
but it can happen for a variety of different things. Uh, you know, I have uh, coaching uh, clients that sometimes call me and say, hey, Dustin, I'm, I'm going in for a major surgery and I don't really have a backup. What do I do? How do I keep my business afloat? Well, that's a triage situation that we can we can certainly deal with. Uh, but you've got to deal with it and deal with it appropriately. And that's what I want to talk about when we come back from the break. But speaking of dealing with things appropriately, if you're not dealing with your appraisal business with ANOW, you're not dealing with things appropriately, folks, because ANOW software is the way that you can and should keep track of everything. Every aspect of your appraisal business can be run through ANOW. You can see the numbers. You can see the statistics. You can see the volume. You can see the flow. You can see each and every individual appraisal and where it's at in the process. Folks, ANOW is absolutely incredible and it's available everywhere. If you're an appraiser, I don't care if you're a single person entity or if you have several appraisers working for you, ANOW is where you need to be. Go to anow.com slash coach to learn more. One more time, it's anow.com slash coach. And we are back, folks. We're talking today about uh, this idea of triage, specifically when you end up with a situation that you didn't plan for. Uh, you can, you know, you can plan ahead, and you can say, you know, there might be some situations down the road of uh, problems we might deal with. But let's face it. You never know exactly what's going to happen in your appraisal office. You never know the emergency that's going to hit you. And sometimes they just hit you. You know, I, I had a situation the other day with one of my coaching clients um, who came to me and said, Dustin, I've got to go take care of my ailing mother. My dad is gone. My mom is sick and she's dying. She's on hospice and I need to go be with her for a couple of weeks. I don't want to lose my business in the process. Well, I, you know, we were able to walk through some ideas and some thoughts and some uh, some real strategies uh, to help that individual to move forward. And, you know, those are situations that I would put in this camp of triage, uh, where you're dealing with situations in such a manner that's very similar to a medical emergency that you might see, uh, you know, in a, in a real emergency. Uh, you know, again, the movie Pearl Harbor comes to mind. And, uh, you know, you've got people that are on stretchers in hallways and outside and uh, you know, it's it's stuff you can deal with, but it's not ideal. And that's really the key here. It's not going to be ideal, but you can deal with it. So here's what you need to do. Here's some thoughts. As you move into, and by the way, I would highly, highly recommend that you do all of this planning beforehand. Again, you cannot plan what the problem will be, what the emergency will be, but you can plan for an emergency. Okay, so plan in general. And, and here's what I would say. You need to break down the tasks that you currently do in your office into basically four different categories. Number one, critical. Number two, essential. Number three, important. And number four, I'm going to call it nice. Okay, so here, here's, here's the deal. For us, it was this. When, when we had our situation a couple of weeks ago, I broke everything down into, into these four categories. Critical is basically appraisal flow, okay? The, the assembly line of the appraisal process cannot stop. We still have to do inspections. We still have to get pictures. We still have to pull comps and make adjustments. And we still have to deal with revision requests and that kind of thing, okay? That is absolutely critical. That is, the appraisal flow is the heart and the blood of the appraisal process, it's the heart and the blood of your appraisal business. You stop the flow, you stop the business, okay? And I know some of you are saying, well, Dustin, what about this individual that you talked to earlier who had to go take care of their ailing mother or, you know, somebody else who had to go in for surgery and just could not do those critical things? That's an issue, but it can be dealt with. And I'll tell you, you know, some things can be done long distance, and that's what we, what we dealt with. And some things have to be put on hold, but they can be done in such a way that you're not shutting down the business. A lot of appraisers are living paycheck to paycheck, and that means they're looking for that next deal. They're looking for that next appraisal to keep them afloat. And though it's not an ideal situation to be in, it is a reality for many appraisers. You've got to decide, if I could not work tomorrow, the next day, and maybe two or three weeks in a row, what would I do? Answer that question 
and you will have a general plan for what to deal with when you run into that. Again, not specific, but generalized problem that you are going to deal with. But for us, appraisal flow was a big deal. We had to keep that going. Essential, okay, the next step is quality control. I don't want to drop the quality of my report. So that was next. It's critical. We get the appraisals out and it's essential that we do so with a high quality. So that is number two, okay? Essential is quality control. We didn't want to stop that and we didn't stop that through our triage process. Number four is important. Let me give you an example of something that's important, but not critical and not essential. And that is client updates. I think it's absolutely important. Okay. I'm using my words carefully here. It's important to keep your clients updated. That kind of thing is super, super important. It's not critical. It's not essential. Okay. Life will go on. Now it won't go on long-term. These are, by the way, short-term triage ways of dealing with things. And they will not, down the road, keep you afloat. If you will not continually keep your clients updated and, and provide good customer service, you're not going to have a, a business long term. But in a short term, a couple of weeks of not updating your clients is probably not going to critically change your business. That's why you're, again, triaging or classifying each of these things that you normally do into different categories. And finally, nice. Okay. Nice is, is uh, stuff that sometimes gets put on the back burner because it's not essential because you're in a triage situation, right? In a triage, in a medical triage, it's nice to have somebody in a nice little hospital room with their own hospital bed, right? That's nice. It's not critical. It's not essential. It's not even important really. In a short term, you can deal with somebody on the grass, on the parking lot, in the hallway, on a cot, Think of your business the same way. Uh, one of the things that I will put into this category is cleaning the bathroom, right? It's pretty nice to have a clean bathroom. But when you're in a triage situation, that's going to get put off. And I'll just tell you, it did get put off, okay? I know gross, right? But it was not essential. It was not critical. It was not even important at the time to clean the bathroom. And so we put that off and we dealt with appraisal flow. Next, we dealt with quality control. Finally, we're dealing with, you know, customer service, client updates, that kind of thing. And finally, finally, at the end, uh, once everything was taken care of and we're out of that triage situation, whew, time to take a break, time to take a breath and clean the bathroom. Folks, uh, if you want more information about how to keep your business running and running properly, I would encourage you to be a part of my Appraiser Academy. The Appraiser Academy meets monthly online and we talk about specifics when it comes to your appraisal. We're right in the middle of, in fact, we're almost done with the first 12 meetings and what we call the boot camp. The boot camp is, uh, is essential information that you need to transform your appraisal office and be more successful than your competition. Hope you'll join me and uh, you can learn more by going to theappraisercoach.com slash memberships. We'll catch you next time, folks. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value.